and welcome to the five week fermented foods challenge. We are ready to go. So those who have registered their spot for the five week fermented foods challenge, I'll be sending you emails and all of these recipes in email form. And you guys will also go into a drawing at the end for um, a masher to kind of help out with your fermentation. I think I have that right here. It looks like this, okay? so you this little tool is so handy for when you're fermenting cabbage like to make sauerkraut or kimchi or any kind of vegetables i gotta show you what i'm fermenting right now it's kind of cool okay i started these i'm fermenting lemons right now so i just took some meyer lemons and i cut them like into a flower and i put them in there put some salt in there and i've been mashing those down in some sea salt and into their own juices and some water. And so once those ferment, you can ferment anything, anything. Uh, but once those ferment until I put the date on here, August 14th, then those will be ready to eat with the skin and everything. And they have all the vitamin C that's just packed into the rind that I'll get to eat. And they'll, they won't have such a bitter taste either, okay? So let's get going on kombucha, because this week is week one. We're gonna make kombucha. Kombucha is a nice fermented tea that helps with everything you can think of under the sun. It's got um, a lot of the nutrients in it to help you fight off cancer cells, to help you boost your immune system. It's gonna help, of course, with the gut flora. So I love kombucha and it's the perfect time to make it in the summer because you're gonna get all the great benefits of having the heat make it work quicker for you. Okay, so here's what you need to make kombucha. And if you've ever seen kombucha, you'll go to the any kind of, even the regular grocery store, you'll see a little jar of it in the, in the cold section where they have the cold beverages and they have kombucha there. Maybe you wanna try a little bit of that. Now with kombucha, you don't need to drink the whole bottle in one day. You just need a little teeny bit. You just take a little cap full of that and that's really all you need for the day to get your nice gut flora working great. Okay, so for kombucha, this is my recipe. Um, I use, I'm gonna use two green teas, and this tea that I'm using is a matcha green with turmeric. So we've got that anti-inflammatory in there with that green tea, okay? And then, of course, I use, you've gotta have some kind, I think green and black tea together work the best for kombucha. However, I know a lot of you guys, for religious reasons or just for reasons of not having caffeine, you don't want to use green or black tea. And I would just say to you guys, you can go ahead and try it all herbal. I would still try it with your SCOBY and see if it works out. It's been in the case for me that these ones work the best, but all the caffeine pretty much ferments out by the end. So you're not even having caffeine hardly at all in a beverage like this, okay? So this is the black tea. I just have two of those. And then I also use this um, herbal tea, and this is a nice little sweet and spicy. I got this from Costco, um, and that's great, just to add a little bit more flavor to my kombucha. The original recipe will call for four black, two green. I swap out two black for two herbal. So if you wanna add a little more herbal tea in or whatever flavor you want there, go for it, okay? You're also going to need one cup of sugar, and I'm using an organic cane sugar and can you use any other sugar? I think you really need to use a table sugar for, for this one. And we use a lot um, because it, it, the bacteria feeds off of that sugar. So by the time this ferments, after three or four weeks, it's not gonna taste hardly sweet. It can if you wanna stop it and then just keep drinking it as it's sweet. It's gonna get to a, a flavor of more of vinegar, a nice, but it's gonna, it's gonna be tolerable. It's gonna be delicious, okay? So just know that the sugar in there, you have to have that much because it feeds the bacteria. Okay, then of course, you're gonna need your SCOBY and your starter liquid, one cup. And then you need your vessel for brewing, okay? So this is my, I, I'm just using a nice little glass gallon jar that I got from my grocery store, it's $5. But if you have a glass jar like this, perfect. Now, some people might go, where do I get a SCOBY? The best place to get a SCOBY for free would be on Craigslist. A lot of your crunchy mamas out there who are into natural wellness will have an extra SCOBY to give to you. Go look on some of those websites like OfferUp and Craigslist, or if you have a Facebook page that's kind of um, for your neighborhood, post it on there and tell them you're looking for a SCOBY. I bet you someone has one to give you. If not, just go on Amazon, type in SCOBY, S-C-O-B-Y, 
They're about six to seven dollars. They'll have one shipped to you probably with that starter liquid because you need that starter liquid and then you can get going on your own kombucha. So don't be like, ah, oh, it's a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna try to do it. It's worth the effort, you guys, okay? So to our jar right here, we need to add four cups of boiling water. All right, I just boiled some right here in my kettle. This is all ready to go. Actually, you know what I'll do is I won't pour that in there yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it in the kettle. It's nice and hot here, and I'm gonna start adding all the tea bags to the kettle, okay? So you're just gonna drop them all in there, and it's gonna start to flavor up this, this water right here. So this will need to stay and steep in here probably 20 minutes because we need to, we also want it to cool down. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep the video going while this is cooling. I'm just gonna show you how I get it started. And I'm not gonna put the SCOBY in when it's hot. That will kill the SCOBY. You wanna make sure that your water temperature is like room temperature before you even add that SCOBY, all right? So, okay, we've got that in there. Let's just give it a good stir. I've got all six tea bags and four cups of water. So that's potent, that's very concentrated there. And we're gonna let that sit in there. And while it's hot, I even want to add the cup of sugar so it dissolves nicely in there, okay? So there's our cup of sugar. I'm gonna give that, and I would use a wooden spoon. I wouldn't use any kind of metal. They say not to use metal when you're working with these teas and things like that. I don't know why, but just go for the wooden spoon and start to stir it up. Let it get dissolved in there. This morning I made, um, can you see those waffles? I made some sourdough waffles with my sourdough starter. So I'm gonna be posting that video too so you guys can learn how to make your own sourdough pancakes or waffles because they're amazing. Okay, all right, so that's ready to go. So from here on out, I want it to cool. I'll probably wait probably 20 to 40 minutes. I'll test the temp and then if it's cool enough, I'm gonna add that SCOBY. And I'm gonna come and continue the video probably in about 20, 30, 40 minutes to an hour, I don't know. And I'm gonna jump back on here. I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. And then we have to do the hard part. And that is wait. We're gonna wait for three weeks, maybe four. I'm probably gonna wait five because I like mine very strong. I like that strong vinegary taste. I feel like it's, it's getting in my gut good, okay? So, um, that's the hard part is waiting, but you can always taste it after a week and if you're happy with that flavor Go ahead and sip on your tea. Otherwise, you're gonna be waiting as long as you want I've had it sit for three four months and it was awesome. It tasted great. Okay, so Let's let's let that cool down and then I'll be right back to check in with you guys Thanks for watching and happy week one of fermentation. I hope you're doing this with me. Let me know Talk to you later. And I want to just go over how to finish off your kombucha to get it ready to ferment. And you're gonna let it sit for probably two to five weeks, okay? That's that's the sweet spot. So here's our kombucha. This is my tea here. I, you, if you saw video one, you saw that I added sugar, four cups of boiling water, and six tea bags. And then I waited a couple hours actually for this to cool down because it needs to be room temperature. It can't be too hot, okay? Because it'll kill the SCOBY. SCOBY is um, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast and that's what that stands for. So that's what you have to have to make kombucha. You can't just go buy kombucha from the store and dump it into a jar and try to make your own from that. You have to have the mother. This is the SCOBY, okay? You can get a SCOBY um, on Facebook. You can get a SCOBY on uh, Craigslist, anywhere, okay? You can get a SCOBY. But you're gonna need that starter liquid as well. And you may be able to use starter liquid from kombucha from the store, but I'm not, I'm not totally sure, okay? I think, I think you can though. All right, so this is very vinegary. I smell it right away. I got this one from a friend. I'm dumping this, actually, I'm gonna pour the tea into my brewing vessel here, okay? So this is gonna go, I've, ta I've taken the tea bags out. This is gonna go in there all the way to the top. Okay. 
So I added three quarts of filtered water to this jar here. It was probably too much. I probably should have added like two quarts, poured this in, and then added more water. So I'm already up to the top here, and I still have to pour in my SCOBY and my starter liquid. So I can already tell that I'm probably going to need to dump just a little bit out. And that's okay. Let's see if we can dump. Okay. So I just dumped a little bit out, and now I'm going to add all that good stuff in there. Okay. So now this is up to the very tippy top. My SCOBY is down at the bottom, but after like a week, maybe even two, it's gonna form another SCOBY. It's gonna form a ring at the top of my jar. And it's gonna be the same size as the top of my jar. I don't wanna put a lid on this because I want it to breathe. So I'm gonna put a cloth over it and a rubber band, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then we're done. Then we're just gonna let it sit in a nice warm place, um, which for me is right on my countertop. I'm in Arizona. But if, if your place isn't too warm, I would put it inside of a pantry closet where it's dark and it's kind of warm in there. And then I would shut the door and check it again in a week. Just take, take a little sip of it with a straw, put a straw in it. If it's still too sweet, you know you need to wait. Okay, so for me, I have to usually wait four to, four to six weeks before I even like it, so. That's where we're at. We're ready to go with that. And next week we're gonna be doing fermented veggies. So you're gonna to need to buy cabbage. I would buy green, I would buy red, I would buy some dill and some garlic. And I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing sauerkraut you've ever had in your life. Are you ready for that one? That's gonna be next Monday. So this is your challenge this week. We're doing kombucha first because it takes the longest to ferment, okay? Um, at the end of those, that five week challenge, this guy will be ready to go. So make sure um, you tell me all about it in the comments or post it on our page here. If you're making your kombucha, I want to see that you're doing it and let me know how it goes. Have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, I do have um, a free webinar next week. It's called How to Win the Battle with Your Picky Eater. So if you've got a picky eater or you're a picky eater yourself, I want you to go register for that. It's a, very, it's a free webinar, okay? And that's gonna be on the 17th, so that's next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm gonna be posting um, the link for you to register, so be on the lookout for that. Have a great rest of your day, bye-bye.